So this one here is the same problem, uh, essentially the same problem, but this time we want to use a sine function, which is a little bit more difficult. So we have to be a bit more careful when we're doing the horizontal shift, but everything else is exactly the same. So again, we should probably sketch this graph. Uh, negative pi over six, maybe it's gonna be somewhere out here. Negative 18, and then uh, 2 pi over 3, maybe somewhere around here. Again, I'm just estimating here. And we have a coordinate at 2, negative 2, and those are my two quadrants. And there represents the middle. Okay, so this, I've got a graph that looks something like that. It's just a sketch. So again, I'm going to find out my amplitude. Okay, my amplitude is going to be calculated by finding the distance between the max and min. Okay, so distance is going to be when I subtract. Okay, I find the difference. I'm going to divide it by 2. And I don't want the negatives in there. So when I find the difference between those points, uh, I'm going to get negative 16 divided by 2 or 8. Okay, so that I'm going to get an amplitude of 8. So the distance from the center Okay, so my center point, the distance from the center point there along the vertically here is going to be 8 units up, 8 units down. That makes sense because it's negative 2. I haven't drawn this to scale very well, but negative 2, negative 10, negative 18. Okay, so there's my A value. I'm going to get my horizontal vertical shift, my Q value. Okay, and the Q value is just a position, so it's going to be the average of those two points. And that will give me the middle, so I'm going to end up with negative 10. So y equals negative 10 represent the middle line. Okay, so the B value I need to calculate for my period. So calculating the period of this function is a difference period is length, so I'm going to do the difference between those x-coordinates, okay. and that difference will give me two quadrants, but I need four, so I'm going to double that, so I end up with 4 pi over 6 plus pi over 6, so that's going to be 2 times uh, 5 pi over 6. Okay, and the period works out to be 5 pi over 3. I need a B value. So I need to, to write the equation anyways, I need the B value. So I do 2 pi divided by 5 pi over 3. And that works to be 6 over 5. So there's my B value. It's a horizontal compression of 6 over 5. And then lastly... I need to find my p value. Okay, the p in this case is a little bit harder because it's, we can't just say, okay, well, it's a vertical shift at the max. Okay, that's what we could do for cosine. But for the sine, we have to be a bit careful because we have to find that point there. And a couple ways to do it. In this, the way it's oriented, this happens to be going the right direction. So if I go to the right, I'm going to go up like a regular sine graph. So I can just find that point. Now, there's two ways to find that point. I can find it as the middle coordinate of those two points. Okay, I should make sure I put the negative in here. That's negative pi over 6. And so that would be, it looks like uh, it would be 3 pi over, uh, so if I subtract that, 3 pi over 6. Okay, so pi over 2 it looks like. It would be the middle point. Oh, wait a minute, hold on here. If I add those two together, I'm going to get 3 pi over 3 divided by 2. It's going to be quarter pi, so it's going to be about quarter pi. The other thing I could do is I can go backwards. Okay, so I'm going to calculate, I'll show you how I calculate my, my p value here. My p value was calculated by finding an average negative pi over 6 plus 2 pi over 3. And halfway between is going to be, uh, what did I say it was going to be? It's going to be 3 pi over 3 
which is, so 3 pi over 6, which is 1 half, so pi over 4. So this position here happens to be pi over 4. Okay, so we can say that horizontal shift is pi over 4. Another way of doing this could be you just take that same coordinate and I'm going to go backwards or forwards from one of those points. So my period is 5 pi over 3. So if I add or subtract 5 pi over 12, so alternatively, I can say p is equal to negative pi over 6 plus 5 pi over 12. Okay, so that's going to be uh, negative 2 pi over 12 plus 5 pi over 12, which is 3 pi over 12, which simplifies to pi over 4. So that's an, these are alternatives to each other. Okay, I prefer 1. That's, again, because it's nice, nicely in the middle. Some people like to use a quadrant and go backwards or forwards for one of those reference points. Here I used this as plus 5 pi over 12. Okay, and this is what I would have done, why I showed down here. So that said, that's all my all the parts I need. Y equals A is 8. I'm using a sine graph here. Uh, the B value is 6 over 5. The horizontal shift, we're going to use pi over 4. And then the vertical shift is down 10. So there it is. There is my equation in terms of sine now. So again, if we can use cosine, because usually the min or max is given, so it makes it easier. However, we should be able to be adaptable and use a quadrant, okay, a quarter of the period. So the periods here, a quarter of that period, and to be able to go between quadrants. The max and min for a sine graph are pi, 2 pi over 3, 5, and 3 pi over 2, negative 3. So what's an equation for this function? It doesn't say, uh, well, it says for a sine graph, doesn't it? Okay. So we're going to find the equation of this function in terms of sine. So here again, we're going to draw this. 3 pi, o, pi 2 pi over 3, then maybe we'll put it somewhere around here. We'll put it up at 5, and let's say 3 pi over 2. I'm just kind of estimating here. It's going to be down here somewhere. And those are my two quadrants. Okay, so it's going to be somewhere around here is my middle. Okay, so again, I'm going to do all my four parts. A is equal to the distance which is subtraction, and half that distance. So we end up with an A value of 4. My middle line here is going to be my Q value. It's going to be the average of those two coordinates, which is 1. So Y equals 1. The period is calculated as, you know, that half of t. So we're going to find a distance. So we want to subtract. Right. And multiply that by 2. Okay, so we end up with 9 minus 4 is 5 pi over 6. So just make sure I got the right thing. 5 pi over 6. Okay, the period works out to be 5 pi over 3. And calculating the B value is 2 pi over 5 pi over 3. And this one works out to be the same. Uh, as last question, B value is exactly the same. Then we're going to lastly get our horizontal shift. Okay, so it's sine. So what we're going to do is there's two options again. So we could use this point here and go backwards one period, but then this means it's, it's going to be a negative sign because it's going down. We have to use a negative sign function. I'm going to do two options here. So I'm going to find that p-value. Okay, I'm going to find halfway between those two points. And 
and divided by 2. Okay, so that's going to be 4 plus 9 divided by 2 is 13 over 6 divided by 2 is 13 pi over 12. Okay, so we can use that, and I'm going to write it over here. It's y equals 4 sine. B value is 6 over 5. The horizontal shift was positive. So it's going to be minus 13 over pi, 13 pi over 12 plus 1. Okay, so that's one option. So that is a p value here. And I'm using this point like that. I'm going to do a different one here. And I'm going to show this one in, oh, what color can I choose here? Okay, so I'll have to do it in black. Okay, we could continue this graph and choose that point. Okay, and use that point as a starting point for my sine function. If I'm going to do that, I need to get to that coordinate there. So I'm going to get the p-value slightly differently. I'm going to start at 3 pi over 2. And then I'm going to add a quarter of that period, 5 pi over 3. So I'm going to add a quarter of that, which is 5 pi over 12. So when I add those two together, uh, I'm going to get 18, uh, 18 over 12 plus 5 over 12 is 23 pi over 12. Oh, I forgot to do this one here. Just going back to the last one. Because it's going down, I have to have a negative. Okay, That's going to be an upside down, vertically flipped sine graph. Whereas this one here, the one I'm doing now, this one is going to be the right way around sine graph, so I'm not going to worry about that. So once I've got my p-value here, I'm going to write my equation. I'll write this one in black. y equals 4 sine, and this is a positive sine value now because I'm going up. Sine 6 over 5 is my b, and my shift now it's going to be 23 pi over 12. Okay, So this p value here goes with a positive sine graph. 